We're going to make an anagram game where the user is asked to make words out of a larger word. And to do that, we're going to put together a starter list of words we can use for the game, which we stored in a separate file. But how do we get the text from that file into the app? Well, it turns out that Swift string type makes it a cinch. Thanks, Apple. If you have not already downloaded the assets for this project from GitHub, please do so now. They're on github.com slash two straws slash hacking with Swift. And in there, in Finder, uh, you will see this list of files hacking with Swift. You'll find project five dash files. And there you'll find start.txt. I'm going to drag that into your Xcode project, making sure copy items needed is checked and create groups. Then press finish to add it. Now this file contains over 12,000 eight letter words we can use for our game, all stored one word per line. It's our job to turn that into an array of words we can play with. Behind the scenes, those line breaks are marked with a special line break character, usually expressed as backslash n. So we need to load that word list into a string, then split it into an array, breaking up wherever we see backslash n. First, go to the start of the view controller class, and we'll make two new arrays as properties. We're going to use the first one to hold all the words in the input file, and the second will hold all the words the player has currently used in the game. So, in this spot right here, I'll say var all words is an empty string array, and var used words is an empty string array. These two here. Next, we need to load our array. This is done in three parts, finding the path to our start.txt file, loading the contents of that file, then splitting it into an array. Finding a path to a file is something you'll do a lot, because even though you know the file is called start.txt, you don't know where it might be on the file system. So we use a built-in method of bundle to find it, URL for resource. This takes its parameters, the name of the file and its path extension, and returns to us an optional URL. You either get the URL back, or you get nil if that file could not be found in our app bundle. Loading a file into a string is also something you have to get familiar with. And again, there's an easy way to do it. When you create a string instance, you can ask it to create itself from the contents of a URL at a particular path. Finally, we need to spit our string into an array of strings based on wherever we find a line break. That's the backslash n. This is as simple as using another method on strings, components separated by. Tell it what string you want to use as separator. For us, that's backslash n. And you'll get back an array. Before we get onto the code, there are two more things you need to know. First, URL for resource returns an optional URL. So you've got to check and unwrap that using if let syntax. Second, creating a string from the contents of a URL can throw, which means we'll call that using try. Now, in this case, we're going to use try question mark, an optional try. We looked at this a while ago when you were learning the Swift fundamentals. It's now time to put it into practice. Okay, time for some code. I'll go down to view to load, and hide this right bar here perhaps. And here I'll say, if let start words URL equals bundle dot main dot URL for resource. I'll say it's called start and the extension is txt. If we went here, it means we found that thing in our bundle. So we can try and load it. If let start words equals try question mark string using the contents of the URL we just got back. And if that succeeded, fantastic. All words, our array of all possible words is equal to start words dot components separated by backslash n. That's the magic character that means a line break. If we cannot find the start words URL, we can say else all words equals an array of, I'll just provide one eight letter word, silkworm as an example. This is an example word to fill that space if we couldn't load the file. Now potentially, if you look carefully, you'll see a situation where we could find the start words URL, we found the path correctly, but for some reason we couldn't load it. Now in theory, this should never happen. If that thing's in our bundle, we should be able to load it. But if we could find it here, 
and couldn't load it here, then all words ends up being empty because this else block only executes if this first condition is false. So alternatively, we could say something like this. Delete the else block from here, add a new condition saying, if all words dot is empty, then give it silkworm. And this is equivalent to saying, is the count zero? Are there no items in there? But nearly always, is empty is a better idea, it's faster. Because many collection types, like strings in Swift, for example, are hard to count. So when we say my string dot count, Swift has to individually count all the letters to say how many there actually are. Whereas saying, is it empty or not? It can say, well, if it's got at least one character, it's not empty. So is empty is faster to use most of the time rather than count zero. So like I said, here we're using the try question mark in action in live code for the first time. Now, realistically, again, this should always be safe. This will always be there, it will always work. But now you know a little bit more, I want to show you alternative ways of working with the same kinds of code. To prove that everything's working correctly before we continue, let's create a new method called start game. This will be called every time we want to make a new word for the player to work with. And it will use the random element method of Swift's arrays to choose one random item from all the strings. We'll say, func start game. Our title of our view controller is all words dot random element used words dot remove all keeping capacity true table view dot reload data. Now line one here sets our view controller's title to be a random word in the array, which will be the word the player has to try and use to find their sub words inside it. Line two removes all values from the used words array, which we'll be using to store the player's answers so far. We aren't adding anything to it right now, so a removal won't do anything just yet. But later on, it makes sure when a new word comes up, we remove any previous guesses they had. Line three is the interesting part. It calls the reload data method of table view. That table view is given to us as a property because our view controller class comes from UI table view controller. And the reload data method asks it to reload all its rows and sections from scratch. It'll say how many sections are there, how many rows are there, and what's in every cell. It's great to use when we change levels in our game. Now our table view doesn't have any rows yet, so this won't do anything for a few moments. However, the method itself is ready to be used and allows us to check we've loaded all data correctly. So we'll call that directly for the end of view load. We'll say start game, like that. Now before we're done, we do need to add a few methods to handle a table view data, specifically number rows and section and cell for row at. These are identical to the implementations in project one, except now we're drawing on the used words array and the word cell identifier. So let's add these two methods now. Uh, number of, we'll get number rows and section, choose that one. I will return used words dot count. And for the second method, we'll say cell for row at. Then let cell equals table view dot dq reusable cell with identifier for index path. Our identifier this time is word. Index path is just the index path that's passed in. We'll set its text label, text to be our used words array, value at index path dot row, and then return cell. So what we're doing here, this is the same as before, this is the same as before, this bit's slightly different because now we're reading into our used words array. You see, our table view is going to show all the words the user's found so far. So as they find words in our anagram, it'll be added to use words and appear in a table view straight away so they can see what they've found so far. At this point, it'll have no effect though because this use words array never changes, but at least the foundation's in place now. Press Command R to build your code, uh, put it onto the simulator, launch it if necessary, and we'll see how it looks. Okay, so my word here, as you can see, I've got a guess, is shocking. And here in this big table view, is where the words I find inside there would be, like the word uh, king, for example. 